Let's talk Torah. It's Parshat Yitro. Yitro is the Midianite priest, Moses' father-in-law. When Moses runs from Egypt, he finds himself in a new environment. Remember, he was raised as an Egyptian prince, but he was also raised as a Hebrew by his own mother. One day when he goes out into the, into the field, into the Egyptian fields, he sees a taskmaster beating an Egyptian, and something in him stirs. Either he is... Um, Either he is overcome by human degradation and slavery, or he is um, overcome that his kinsman is being beaten. And both of those are not just valid, they are urgent and they prompt action. He kills the taskmaster and then has to run for his life. He escapes to Midian where his father-in-law takes him in, and he, um, well, he's not his father-in-law yet, where he meets his wife Tsiporat, she brings him home, and Yitro, uh, who becomes his father-in-law, is the priest of Midian. Now, we are a few parsha later. In this parsha, named for Yitro, and I want us to notice that, it is one of two Torah portions named for someone who is not Israelite, not Jewish. That matters quite a lot. In this Torah portion, we're about to receive the Torah. Parsha Yitro is one of the highlights of the entire Torah. How amazing that it's named for someone who isn't Jewish, isn't Israelite. Well, Yitro reunites Moses with his family. That's a very important part of this conversation. And here comes Moses to do his job, and his father-in-law is watching, and that already sounds like a good setup for a joke. But he sits, and all day, all day, Israelites stand in line waiting for him to hear judicial cases. And they bring questions to him, and all day and all night, he answers their questions. Yitro observes this and says, what are you doing? And Moses says, <clears throat> this is my job. I sit here and I adjudicate. When people have a problem, they come to me. And Yitro says, this isn't good. Literally, it's not good what you're doing. And then Yitro suggests a system that we now have as the judicial system in America and elsewhere around the country, a judicial system of appellates, where there is a group of judges who are most accessible in the widest ways for the smallest questions. When they can't answer it, they go to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. And when there's a question that no one else can answer, it goes to Moshe. I want you to imagine the dynamic. Moses has a sense of what he's supposed to do. He has his own traditions, though the people is very young. Moses is in charge. This is how we do things. Yitro comes with a new technology for answering questions, this judicial system. And Moses, instead of saying, no, that's not how we do it, hears it, lets it in, and incorporates it into how he does what he knows. Let me then share what the process of this new book is. If you can't see the title, it's called the AI Torah Commentary. Let me tell you what it is, because it is shocking. It is interesting. A little bit scary. AI stands for Artificial Intelligence. There is a growing facility with artificial intelligence, which means technology that can learn, that can adapt. And whereas in science fiction that is a threat, where the machines will be able to think for themselves, which means they become human, and then every science fiction horror movie happens. This is what is now available through a, a, a program called ChatGPT. I used ChatGPT to write this book. I want to tell you what it does. I was sitting with a friend at UJA, Graham Cannon, for those who, knows, those who know Graham, and he was telling me about ChatGPT just last week. And he said it can mimic the style of a person and even the content if they've written enough and I've written a lot so he said I want to challenge you and this is going to be a, a strange experience challenge chat GPT to write an essay on a Torah portion in the style of Rabbi Menachem Creditor and I kind of laughed it off but I tried it Saturday night and it did it not only wrote an essay about the Torah portion, it wrote it in my voice, saying things that either I have said or would say. It quoted commentaries that I would quote. And so, 
First of all, I stayed up all night. This was fascinating. I had it talk about me in the style of Nick Kroll. Those, those of you who know, Nick is a comedian. He actually graduated from the LaFell School here in Westchester. And his parents, uh, Lynn and Jules, are, are sweet, dear friends. So this is what I did. And either you'll enjoy it or you'll be scared of it. The book is a commentary on the book of Genesis. It's the first volume. I'm planning on doing a commentary on the entire Torah. Now, I wrote the introduction consciously, writing it. But every other part of the book, including a closing blessing, was written by a prompt of mine by ChatGPT. But then I decided, instead of having it be my voice on the Torah, I asked it to make commentaries with other voices. I want you to listen to the... To the historical figures that I asked to comment on each Parsha. I chose people who were not alive anymore. Breshit is commented on in the style of William Wordsworth, the Romance poet, and Mary Oliver, and William Shakespeare. Noach comments in the style of Dr. Seuss, and Jane Austen, and Dr. Spock. Lech Lecha, Stephen Soundheim, Joseph Halevi, and Anne Conway. I'm going to give you all of it because it's amazing what came out. Vieira in the style of Victor Hugo, Emma Lazarus, and René Descartes. Chaye Sarah in the style of Gene Wilder, James Baldwin, and Sandy Koufax. Toldot in the style of the Brothers Grimm, Groucho Marx, and Golda Meir. Vayetze in the style of Nelson Mandela, Daenerys Targaryen, for those who are uh, Game of Thrones fans, and Gershom Shalom, the founder of the modern study of Kabbalah, Vayishlach, Benjamin Franklin, Amos Oz, and Marie Curie, Vayeshev in the style of Yoda, Harriet Beecher Stowe, and Bella Abzug, Miketz in, in the style of Harvey Milk, Baruch Spinoza, and Nina Simone, Vayigash in the style of John Lennon, Charlotte Bronte, and Jorge Luis Borges, and the final Parsha, I want you to hear this. Vayechi, written in the style of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. An original comment on the Parsha Vayechi by Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. I also had Vayechi in the style of President John F. Kennedy. And the final comment, this was really, really twisty, is a comment on the end of Genesis by the prophet Isaiah. I had Chad GPT write an essay by me on what AI is and what its dangers are. And I had every bio written, except for mine, <laughs> by ChatGPT. <clears throat> yes, I edited the essays, Caroline. That's a good question. I edited them because, for instance, <laughs> you know, I had to change a little bit. When Nelson Mandela began with, to my fellow Jews, so I had to do a little bit of editing. And then when I tried to do the um, bio for the prophet Isaiah, ChatGPT was quietly, probably learning from Christian sites. So the bio for the prophet Isaiah said Isaiah was a pro an Israelite prophet in the 8th century BCE. They didn't say BCE, they said BC, um, who predicted the coming of Jesus, which is, of course, a Christian interpretation of the book of Isaiah. So I edited here and there. But by and large, I did not. I kept it. But my, the introduction that I wrote was actually something that I wrote myself. First of all, I'm sharing this because I can stop thinking about it. It is a fascinating, fascinating um, tool. The issues of plagiarism are fascinating, Deborah, because ultimately, ChatGPT is now forbidden in college classrooms and in other schools, but... I spoke to actually the head of school at my children's school, Dr. Michael Kay, at a basketball game where our kids were playing together. And I said to him, what do you think about this? And he said, for our students who haven't written, it's plagiarism and it's not ethical. But you, he was talking to me, you've written a lot. So actually you've done the work. One of the things I did Saturday night is I had ChatGPT write an essay on quantum mechanics in the style of Rabbi Menachem Creditor, and I don't really know anything about quantum mechanics. So it channeled my reflections and then formulated 
I think, I don't know enough, but it seems like a very interesting perspective on, uh, on quantum mechanics. Now, if I hadn't done it that way and I wanted to learn about quantum mechanics, I would have Googled it or found a book, read it, and then written something. This actually increases the pace of the learning, even though it's incredibly selective. Yes, Ron, I, I created the book in, well, in, in a day. And then because of um, some technology that I use for, for other things, it's able to put it out. Now, what's also interesting is that the legal um, permissions involved are clear because only human beings can own, uh, can own their intellectual property. This was generated by a prompt and an automatic, um, and an automatic technique. So anyway, this is a fascinating question. We are in a fascinating new place. And I bring it in here because Parshat Yitro demonstrates Moshe's willingness to take in new information and adopt a new technology, the judicial system, to answer the most heavy questions of his time. He had to trust that someone else would speak in his voice and effectively channel wisdom and truth. So all I'm saying is, I have no idea what this new thing is. I have no idea. I'm fascinated, a little bit worried. My introductory essay is actually all about how do I know that I'm real? When I prompt ChatGPT to write something in my name, is that me speaking? And the answer is no, but it sort of knows me. Eventually, I'm assuming AI will get so good, it'll be harder to tell the difference. So I bring in examples from within Jewish tradition and beyond in the introductory essay about how do you know something is authentic when it's being imitated very well. Examples from Madeline the Engel in a book called The Wind in the Door, an example from the Marvel miniseries WandaVision, where Vision and White Vision, two characters, talk about the ship of Theseus, which is when a ship has been replaced board by board, plank by plank, is the new ship, which is the old ship made of new pieces, the original ship, is it still the ship of Theseus? How do we know what's real? Well, here's what I want to say. You, friends, you're real to me. I hope that I'm real to you. This is an experiment in new technology. So I hope, I hope, I hope that this will be interesting. I have no idea, no idea what it'll mean to anyone. It was fun to do. It was interesting to do. I hope that we'll read it. And think about it, because if it turns out that we can bring voices to bear on new questions that they never thought about while they were alive, we will have a way, sort of, of being in conversation with the past, with our ancestors. I don't think that's really them, but I'm constantly talking to Rashi, a commentator from 1040 in France. I'm constantly talking to Rabbi Akiva, who lived in the first century CE. I'm speaking to Moshe Rabbeinu. I'm speaking to my matriarch, Sarah. Fascinating, friends. Fascinating. Who knows what this is? It's a strange new world, to be sure. But Moshe was listening to Yitro when he created the system that now holds us safe. Maybe we can use the technology and grow even more. <clears throat> Um, so Caroline's asking a question, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close. Did I feel the ideas were new, or were they collected and repeated from something already written? A little bit of both. Because on the new questions, which I have not written about AI until this book, ChatGPT correctly understood how I would feel about it. So, let's have some fun, friends. Let's play with it. Be careful with it. I don't, I don't know what this is. But it's Torah somehow, because we're in it and we're in it together. So I hope that you enjoy. We'll certainly be talking about it some more. Let's sing our way into a good day. Here we go.
bless you, friends. See you tomorrow.